Hey guys, Jake here from Michigan, Habitat Consultant with Whitetail Partners. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the pre-rut. Uh, in the northern section of the Whitetails range, the pre-rut has either already started or is just about ready to kick off. So in, again, in today's video, we want to bring you guys five tips for hunting the pre-rut. And each one of us here at Whitetail Partners is going to be bringing you guys a different tip. But before we dive into those tips, I did want to take some time just to talk about the pre-rut and, and talk about what the deer are doing this time of year, just so you can kind of understand what we're doing when we're hunting during the pre-rut. The pre-rut is going to start around the same time every single season in your area. So those northern areas, it's going to start a little bit sooner. Properties further south, it's going to start a little bit later. But wherever your property is located, the pre-rut is going to start around the same time every single season. For our property here in mid-Michigan, the pre-rut normally kicks off around the 20th to the 24th of October every single season. This is when those older bucks in the neighborhood, they start to move a lot more consistently during daylight. The older bucks know that the breeding season or the rut is right around the corner and they really only have one thing on their mind during the rut and that's breeding as many does as possible. So in order to accomplish that, they need to be as efficient of a breeder as they can be. And so during the pre-rut, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get ready for the rut so they can make sure that they breed as many does as possible. Now, I don't want to talk about too much without going into our five tips, but with that in mind, you know, these older bucks, they're trying to be as efficient as they can be during the rut, you know, to breed as many does as possible. You know, that's going to lead to very predictable behavior during the pre-rut. And so with that, you know, let's get into our five tips for hunting the pre-rut. And I'm just going to read these right from the guys. That way I'm not misrepresenting anything that they say. And our first tip comes from our consultant down in Georgia, Josh. One of Josh's favorite hunting tips or hunting tactics for the pre-rut is to set up downwind of an evening food source to catch perpendicular buck movement. Oftentimes these bucks cruise perpendicular to the trails that lead from the doe bedding areas to the food sources. And this allows them to scent check any does that have left those bedding areas, traveled along those trails, and entered the food source. A lot of bucks will move around the food source this way because it allows them to stay in cover. It keeps them safe and they can be more efficient when they're searching for that first receptive doe. Remember, during the pre-rut, these bucks are trying to get ready for the rut. They want to breed as many does as they can. So one of the things that they do during the pre-rut to accomplish this is they keep tabs on all the doe families in the area. And in the evenings, where are these doe families going? They're going to the food source and the bucks know this. So by cutting on the downwind side of these food source, these bucks are able to scent check all the does in the food source along with all the trails leading from the bedding area to that food source. So if there's ever a doe that's close to coming into estrus, that buck's going to know and he can lock her down. And that's going to lead in perfectly to our next tip from Sam, the founder of Whitetail Partners over in Wisconsin. Sam wants to make sure that you guys are being mindful, especially you guys with cell cameras, of the buck activity on scrapes that are nearing daylight right now. We all get pictures of our target bucks throughout the night, and it's always good to get those pictures for proof of life, but we can't hunt the deer at night. We need those bucks to be in daylight, but right now those bucks can tip their hand. If you start to see buck activity on your scrapes from your cell cameras that's nearing daylight, those bucks will be in daylight soon. Another thing to watch for this time of year is when you do get that daylight picture of your target buck. If you get a picture of him in daylight in the morning on a scrape, make sure you're in that stand that evening or the following morning because that buck, he will be back to check on and work that scrape. The buck activity, or I guess I should say the daylight buck activity, increases greatly on these perennial or these mock scrapes on your property. And the reason is because these scrapes are one of the primary ways that the deer herd communicate with one another. Scrapes are not just used by bucks during the pre-rut and the rut. Scrapes are used by the entire deer herd throughout the entire year. They're used by does, they're used by fawns, you know, obviously they're used by bucks. Deer use scrapes to communicate with one another. And if you're a buck and you're trying to figure out, you know, what other bucks are in the area, what does are in the area, you know, which does are close to coming into estrus, so you're, again, you're trying to be as efficient of a breeder as you can be, you know, where are you going to go? One of the big things you're going to do is check and work these perennial scrapes. So definitely make sure that you're paying attention to those perennial or, or those community scrapes on your property. The next tip comes from Lee. He's our habitat consultant down in Tennessee. 
And this is for those of you guys with the lower deer density. Try to keep tabs and pattern your doe family groups because that first doe that comes into estrus, she's gonna get that older buck killed. But how do you know which one is gonna be the first one to come into estrus? Well, a lot of times those younger bucks, those immature bucks, they're gonna give her away. If you start seeing those younger immature bucks bump into doe, you know, this is likely the first doe that's gonna come into heat. The only problem for those younger bucks is they're pushing her around about three to five days too early. Those older bucks have experienced this before. You know, they know she's not ready yet. You know, she's still three to five days away. And you better believe that those older bucks know when she's gonna come into estrus. They can smell when she's ready. So they're gonna be keeping tabs on that doe, and so should you, which is why it's a lot easier to do this with low deer densities. If you know that that deer is bedding in a, in a certain area on your property, then that's where you need to focus. So, so don't be focusing on the food plot that you saw that younger buck bumping her around. That's not where this older buck is gonna push that doe to tender. Try to find a thick travel corridor or, or a thick bedding area, either around that bedding area or along the way to the food source. Try to catch the buck as he's trying to intercept that doe. This next tip is gonna be from me and we're gonna be coming back to scrapes. And my tip is you guys should be placing an extra emphasis on those scrapes right after a rain event. And that's because rain washes scent away. Think about if you're trying to change a camera on your property, like you wanna change the SD card or maybe it ran out of batteries, you gotta put some new batteries in there. When are you gonna do it if it's in a, a hard to get to location of your property? Well, a lot of times what you do is you wait for a rain event so you can slip into that area while the deer are bedded down during the rain and you can slip out and have the rain wash your scent away. While it's not foolproof, it is a way to get to those hard to reach areas of your property to change those SD cards without leaving a significant impact on your property. Again, because a lot of your scent is being washed away. And why this is important for hunting over scrapes throughout the pre-rut is because bucks know that rain washes scent away too. Re remember back to Sam's tip, you know, these bucks are hitting scrapes a lot, leaving scent behind to communicate with the rest of the herd. You know, checking on these doe family groups, letting other bucks know that they're in the area. And if all the scent that they deposited got washed away, one of the first things that they're gonna do after that rain stops is they're gonna check that scrape and freshen that scrape back up. And I can tell you just from my personal experience using cell cameras that we notice a lot of buck activity on scrapes immediately following the rain event. And that's one of the cool things about cell cameras. You can look outside and it's raining and it stops. 10 minutes later, you get a notification, it's a buck on his scrape. And, and that's something that it's harder to figure out when you're reviewing SD cameras, but when you have a cell camera and you can witness the weather change and then you see the picture happen immediately after, it can make it a lot easier to figure out what these deer are doing. And after a rain event, a lot of times these bucks are gonna get up and check and freshen up their scrapes. This next tip comes from Greg, who is our habitat consultant down in Ohio. Try to find a primary scrape that is located below a buck bedding knob or below a doe bedding area. Once you find that scrape, set up downwind and put in your first all day sit after your first major temperature drop. Bonus points if there's rain involved. Some of the best scraping activity can take place in these locations this time of year, especially if you can pair it with a cold front that's moving through. And the thought process here is very similar to what we've been talking about throughout this entire video. The bucks in the area, they're trying to keep tabs on these doe family groups. They're trying to figure out who's gonna be the first one to come into estrus. They're gonna be checking these doe family groups in their bedding areas, checking them in food plots, checking all the scent left behind at these perennial scrapes. They wanna make sure that when the big chase kicks off that they're ready for it. And this pre-rut behavior can make them fairly predictable. So hopefully these five tips help you guys in the next coming weeks when you're hunting during the pre-rut. If you guys have any other tips that we didn't mention, you know, please drop those in the comment section below. I'm sure that other viewers would love to hear about additional tips, but guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. And please let us know if we can help you change your property for good.